Hi guys, it's Kate. I've decided to make a couple of videos that talk about all the different uses of the cross product and the dot product and projections and lines and planes so that you can look them over at your leisure, maybe rewind a couple, zoom in on a couple examples that you'd like to have worked out so that you can figure out a good sort of framework and lens for you to work the problems on these tricky problem sets that involve distances between lines or points and lines and points and planes and all kinds of things. So let's do this example. Our task is to find the distance from the point 1, 3, negative 2 to the line x equals 3t, y equals t plus 1, z equals t minus 2. First, let's just draw a really rough sketch of what we're dealing with. One line, which is the line described by these scalar parametric equations, and then the point sort of floating off in space away from the line. Now, at first glance, if you have no experience with these types of problems, it may be really difficult to figure out where to start. And so I encourage you to break down either the lines or planes that you're working with into the distinguishing characteristics you know about them. So for a line, remember that a line is determined by a point and a direction vector. Just by looking at these scalar parametric equations, we can suss out a point that is on this line. The particular point that I'm speaking of is the one, as we mentioned in class, that you can find by looking at the components that are not coefficients of t. So in x, there is nothing other than 3, which is the coefficient of t, so the point on the line is going to have an x component of 0. The y component point of, on the line is going to have a y component of 1. And the z component is going to be negative 2. So let's just draw this point on the line. Note that we don't know anything about where exactly that point is on the line in relation to P, and that's okay. I've just drawn it down here and I named it Q for ease. And the other thing that we can determine is the direction vector for this line. Note that the direction vector's components will be the coefficients on T in each of the scalar parametric equations. So our direction vector is going to be three, one, one. Let's add that as well. Now, let's figure out how we can visualize exactly what we're looking for. We are looking for the distance from this point P to this line right here. And so what that means is we want to drop an altitude from P that is perpendicular to the line. So what we want to determine is the length of that red dotted line. It's also a very useful technique to add in the vector that joins the point that you care about, that's sort of off afloat in space, to the point that's on your line. So let's do that. Now there's always a tendency here to say, aha, what I want to do is I want to take this QP and project it onto a vector in this direction, and that's it. I just need to find the component of QP in the direction of this red dotted line. But the problem is, is that we don't actually know a vector that is pointing in the direction of the red dotted line. And if you're saying, no, no, I know the red dotted line is normal to uh, this vector 3, 1, 1, I say, unfortunately, there are an infinite number of vectors that are perpendicular to 3, 1, 1. So that's not enough. We don't, we don't necessarily get all of the information that we need just by realizing, oh, we could project it onto this. We have nothing we can actually project on because we don't know what that is. Instead, let's recall that QP and V span a parallelogram. They're anchored at the same point. Let's take a look at what that parallelogram looks like. There we go. I have filled it in. Now remember, in class, we discussed that the area of this parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of QP and V. Let's write that down. But it's also important to note that the area of a parallelogram, the really basic geometric definition that we all learned way back in the day, is base times height. So that would be the length of V times the length of our dotted red line. So what's interesting here is that we can equate the two. And what we want to solve for is actually the height of the parallelogram. Remember that height of a parallelogram has to be perpendicular to the base. So all we have to do is divide by the base. Now, of course, the base, the length of the base, is just the length of V, our green guy down here. So let's write that down. And there we have an exact 
uh, formula for us to compute the height of this parallelogram and, in effect, the length of that red dotted line. Let's calculate the cross product first. And of course, what we really want is the magnitude of that cross product. So we have the square root of 30 is the square root of the sum of the squares for QP cross V. And the magnitude of V is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of V. So we will get the square root of 11. So if we're really trying to compute the height here, we take the magnitude of the cross product divided by the magnitude of V, which is our base. We end up with the square root of 30 over 11. And that is our final answer. Really take your time, work through this at a very deliberate pace. Give yourself some time as you're working through some of these problems to try some things and see what's missing and see what works and see what doesn't. Okay, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.